In today's Clash Royale video, we will take a look at some of the best games of Mohammed Light this year in Clash Royale year. Might end soon the Clash Royale is coming, so I think we kinda take a look at the last Clash Royale competition. For sure the Kezu Cup is starting soon, but the CL competition is over. So I thought we're gonna break down some of the greatest games of this year from Mohammed Light. So if you guys enjoy this type of content and wanna get bad on Clash Royale, make sure to subscribe, make sure to give a fat thumbs up. And I would say let's directly jump into the games. And the games we're looking at today are like the first one is against Samuel. Basotto. So Samuel Basotto um, did a really really well the Clash Royale League World Finals got first so really really good games for sure and we see Mo starting off with a Hawk Rider and Samuel goes in for the Tornado. So you could probably think this is honestly a really good match but why I was like want to look at this game especially for Mo Light is since Mo Light played this absolutely incredible in the matchup you could think this is not a good matchup. This shouldn't be a uh, bad matchup. So Skellens are coming down, which is really good. He goes in for defense of Hawk Rider since he knew, okay, I had to do it. Mm. Um, because yeah, he didn't have Lock and Cycle, he didn't have Fire Spin Cycle. The Hawk Rider gets a shot, which is for sure really, really good here. Mo for sure waits as long as he can for the Queen ability to get as much value as he can. Now he's doing that. And right now he's just going to go in for the Cannon defensive here. Cannon is going to clean up for sure. Mo still call it for G Skelly or the Valkyrie for sure. I would say at least this G Skelly is not really that great in the matchup. It's better against the bridge ones, of course, but the main defense for Mo will be the fire speed plus log on top of the drill or the skeleton and the uh, log on top of the drill. So he's gonna go use his Q here. Really good earthquake here, I guess. Um, going in for a log. No, he's just gonna go for a G G-Skate to block the bridge. Really, really interesting. And I guess he's going for skeletons here, but the match archer, unfortunately for him, hits the skeletons and Mo is taking some damage, but at least the G Skelly is still counter pushing. So. Uh, Samuel at least has to spend something which he does here with the Bamboo is still fine still good but you need to think okay Samuel for sure will get one like again or like one situation damage of the matching archer with this bridge when units like the um, golden knight tornado and also drill it's really really hard to defend and Mo doesn't really have anything against the magic archer um, so he's going for the magic archer here just gonna relax chill and let's see what he's going to do next. Okay, he's going for a G scale aggressive and start on top of the G scale, which is pretty fine. Always like going for the fire split just to get some value. And now he's just going to do this really, really good barbarian barrel here from um, Mo. And the Hawk Rider this time got a shot. And this was a really huge Hawk Rider shot, which um, Samuel was taking there. So the next play, which um, Mo's going to do, he's going to go for, for a really high cannon, distracting G scale, also making sure he doesn't really get any magic arch there. Going in for a lock now, uh, going for scans now, really perfect scan placement. Going to wait one second with the fire split, going for a perfect fire split. And I guess right now, Mo once again is counter pushing. Want to play E with the right side, which is the same we're doing, so that the, um, yeah, the, in case the G scale is going to be able to kill the um, E with, um, or like, like the E with is going to survive um, from the G scale, he's not going to walk into the bomb. And as you guys can see, the free cut cycle is going down. So for sure, he wants to be really aggressive. He's going for a fire split now on the left side. And it's time to go in for Hawk Rider. I think NATO is not, it's not in cycle yet. So he needs to go for defensive drill. And defensive drill isn't really putting a job in he, what he wants to see. Since the Q come down and you don't really want to play it. But at least the Ghost survived here. So the Ghost actually will get a huge shot and you can see Samuel really happy about it in a game where he feels like he couldn't really do anything so far. He got a big shot. Um, even like he's now up on damage, I still feel like like with Mo having like a big spell advantage. The Hawk Rider timings for Mo are just absolutely perfect. And also, look at the Samuel really needs to worry about the King Tower. The perfect defense always with the G-Skelly never overextending. He never plays the G-Skelly when he feels like Samuel has a lot down on the opposite lane because he knows Samuel could just actually really rush him in this lane. So it's time for another Hawk Rider here. EQ is coming down to the Goblin Rule, but for sure the G-Skelly is still killing that. He's still using a build here. Why is he using a build? Because he thought maybe he will get a shot eventually because the Queen ability is able to kill the Goblins faster, but he didn't. Going for Fire Spirit once again at the bridge, baiting out Elixir since he knows Samuel can't really let it go. So he's going for a magic arch here. Really, really good magic archer. And um, what Samuel did really well here is like just letting the Hawk Rider go. It was a really, really smart play. And now Samuel is going in opposite lane. You see, he still needs to defend the left side, which he does. Now the ghost is coming down. Lock is coming down really, really early. And I think he's hoping for a big connection here with the Samuel doing, but he doesn't get the connection here. So he was um, doing a pretty good job on the left side now, I guess, against the Queen. A really perfect lock by Mo Light, and this is not looking good. G-Scale comes down, 
GSK is coming down there. I guess he needs to go for a tornado, pull it back. Um, the Hawk Rider still gets one shot. The, the Hawk Rider still gets one shot. 20 seconds remaining. Goes at the bridge. He needs to go all in. He gets, goes for a Golden Knight here. He goes for this. And he knows what the heck is he supposed to do. I think what... Yeah, he's going for a Magic Arch now. He tries to get a... Um, a connection somehow, some way, but the Golden Knight doesn't get the tower, but the Magic Arch is connecting here, the Magic Arch is connecting, the Magic Arch actually put in some work, imagine, imagine the Golden Knight would have connected in this situation, if the Golden Knight would have connected in this situation, I think this would have been over, and it would have, would have been one of the craziest comebacks ever in Clash Royale history. Game number two here from Samuel is here versus Mo Light once again, as I said, it's a 2v2, and a 2v2, it's a best of three, so first, who wins two games, and Mo actually plays a deck he didn't play before, Samuel the same, so kind of switching up his comfortable decks. So same as just using his flying machine here on top of the Bale Dragon. Going for a tornado here. Solid tornado. Seems like yeah it's a really good play. Actually the other tower kills that going for Baba Amber in front just like to tank that. And same with doing a good job killing this this Baba Amber on one side and also making sure to kite the Bay Dragon over. And Mo doesn't really have too much so he needs to commit a full ice with so what he gonna do now is just going in here aggressive what he does baby doing coming down baby doing pulling a good job but still look at the damage he's taking but a really good tornado coming in from um mo light getting the king to activation i could have think it was a really really smart play by Samu going in there like knowing like we all thought okay after the minor and the, the mean hot survive of one hp actually the three minions after the baby ring didn't kill it, that's like gonna be a ton of damage, but the NATO was actually incredible. Not just killing the minions, also making really, really sure to kill, um, yeah, to activate the kingdom against the miner. So what's interesting in the situation is kinda does Samuel does, has, does he have arrows or fireball? And he is going for fireball, so it basically means he doesn't have a big, uh, small spell. So Greybeard for sure will be hard to defend. So NATO's coming down, really good NATO. I guess right now, Samuel is uh, like Mo is gonna use a tombstone in the back, which is a really smart play. Going for a tombstone in the back in this matchup, it's so so annoying for um yeah Samuel to deal with since he doesn't really have anything against it. So he's just gonna use a flying machine here. Flying machine really really smart here. Force out the poison, but still at the same time the flying machine gets value, but also Mo has to kill it. So it seems like a really even trade, and this is also a really really close game. And this is why I want to show you the best of three, since I feel like the best of three from Morton against Mo you could also show. Mm. But also a ton of guys, you guys saw it already. So for the game, they kind of taking a look and which people didn't really see a lot um, is really, really smart. So he's gonna get another poison now. You could think, okay, he doesn't have a poison in cycle right now since he just uses it on defense. But, um, but the free card cycle, the free card cycle. Um, it's really, really helping Mo here to get another poison soon as uh, like as soon as he can. But right now, I guess, um, he gets a really solid push. The miners connect on tower. He needs to go for a Skelly King. I guess the Skelly King uh, might walk there that he gets like one connection. Um, or the tower like one splash it. And uh, like the same is really coming back here. I guess he wants to keep up the bridge pressure now um, with the mortar, but he doesn't go. I don't know. Um, that he got. Uh, I don't know if he's like had a mortar in cycle, but at least he didn't go for that, which is quite surprising for me at this point. So at least like he's poisoning defense, right? As long as he's poisoning on defense of the flying machine, I think Samuel needs to be happy since he doesn't really have too much against Grey, but just doesn't really get poison value at all. Um, so the miner's coming down, really bad miner catch up. So I think like more expected to not go mine in the safe spot since it's predictable, but it's actually the right decision here. Um, so he's blocking the bridge. He's going for a flying machine in the back, which is a really smart play. And now he's just gonna drop this. But look at this. Look at the Skelly King on, on, de on defense. It's just absolutely like killing everything on top of the mortar, which is really, really bad for for um, Samuel here. Right now, Miner's coming down. Miner's pulling in a really, really great job. Going in for Tornado here. Tornado's doing an insanely great work. And he's just gonna go in for another, uh, another flying machine, trying to get there. But the free card cycle is really helping. And, and also, Samuel knows one more of Graveyard Poison, and he cannot defend this. So he's gonna go for a Graveyard here. And he's gonna go in for. Poison here at the same time, Samuel plays the, skelly, uh, the skeleton army. And the reason he went with the miner was, yeah, he just wanted to kind of make sure that Mo doesn't have enough elixir. That Mo doesn't have enough elixir to go in for the poison of the skelly army preemptive since he knew it was his only card, but that's exactly what he did. GG's were played. Mohammed Light beat Samuel. What an absolutely amazing game. And now I just want to uh, look at one more game with you guys today against Air Surfer.
So the final game I want to take you guys or like to want to take a look with you guys is this game against Airsurf. I think we all know that Airsurf is one of the best players in the entire world. He also did really, really well World Finals playing here against Mo. And this is a perfect game where you guys can see Mo knowing exact cycle, knowing everything. Um, mm, yeah, exactly what he needs to do. And this is really what I like. And also Airsurf did some mistakes, but he didn't do the mistakes. Um, because he was just like nervous at all. He was just doing the mistakes because Mo did like put the pressure on him. So you go with Thor Mortis since you know, okay, he still needs to defend the Queen on the opposite lane. He still needs to defend the Queen on the opposite lane. This is exactly, um, yeah, why he's like doing that. He knows, okay, he needs to commit a ton of elixir. He doesn't have his mini pack on cycle, so he needs to commit a huge Mega Knight. This is why he went mortar and always also got like a ton of damage really early on. Going for the perfect Valk place in both or like in between both towers to have completely distract that. And this is just absolutely important, guys. So, um, he's just gonna cycle Zap here, going for a Zap. And Mo is just gonna go for an Ice Spirit here. He's going for bats in the back. Ice Spirit actually doing a pretty good job, like killing the bats. He's going for a Snowball, so good to know also for um, both now that he has also a Snowball to push back the Mini Packer. So Miner's coming down, really great Miner placement here. So Guards are really able to get like a ton of value on top of that, and he goes in for another one here. Really unfortunate for, um, for how's it called, for Mo Light here. And for Airsurfer that Air Surfer here that he used this musket on the opposite lane, really good wall breaker placement. Airsurfer distracting that on the left side, um, which was really, really, really smart, honestly, if you guys, if you think about that. Like, first of all, it killed the mortar. Also, second of all, it distracted the mortar. So, really, really, really smart um, there. So, the bats, I mean, the bats coming down behind the Magnite, but really great queen, really great ice put, like, just to strike everything. And he still has a full life queen on the map absolutely crazy and what mo is doing right now is absolutely insane going for hawk rider opposite lane since he knew okay air doesn't have enough elixir so he goes in for defensive slap he also going for the q since he knew i can spend that much i can spend that much this is exactly what he's doing and he's doing a really really good job against that so he's going off for mortar and just what mo really does is knowing when the opponent needs to spend elixir on one side um Mm, what I want to say, like he, he exactly knows. I really want to phrase it like in the perfect way. He really, really knows when to spend elixir, like when to force elixir. Always know how much elixir, uh, how much elixir the opponent has. Also, like really great defense here, which is um, important to know. Like right, if you like sometimes overcommit on one side, you never see more like overcommitting. You all, he always knows what he has to do on defense, what he has to do on offense. So, at example, he goes in for a queen. He knows how much elixir opponent has. He wants to get like a great defense, and I think the main key defense in this matchup, in this game, was the one defense when he was able to kill, um, the, like keep the full HP arch queen against the mega, against the bats and so on, and get the arch queen on offense, and on the opposite lane, like pressuring with the hawk at the same moment, going for the Q to, to finish off the musketeer, knowing that um, Air Surfer didn't have anything in Psyche since the mini packer was um, not in hand, he still had to play a musketeer, which was the right decision, like killing both of that, really, really well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to sub to this channel if you guys always want to know the best content or like the best videos and clash sure how to get better. I just hope you guys enjoyed this one. I would say I'm out, thanks for watching and goodbye guys.